What's up everybody? I'm in Maryland and my friend Mark and Teresa's, they have an amazing rig that they're gonna give, give us a tour of. I'm super stoked about it. I've been friends with them for a while on YouTube. So let's go check it out. Thank you guys for following Happy's Trails. Hello, Mark and Teresa here from Out of Office Camping in Hampstead, Maryland. What we have here today, we're going to do a little bit of a rig tour. This is a Ford Ranger 2019 FX model. Starting at the front of the vehicle, basically this truck itself is a purpose-built adventure rig. And the whole idea of that is everything should have a purpose and we're trying to be very wise and smart with what we put on the vehicle along with our weight. Starting at the front, we have a two inch receiver, which is built into the frame that we basically bolted on, keeping the stock bumper so this can be easily removed and therefore keeping the weight down. We have the worn winch and then we have the Yankum, Yankum groove ferrule lead without any kind of metal components, which is really nice. We have a lot of the Yankum recovery gear, which we have in the Milwaukee Packout, which is waterproof. Uh, IP65. We have the two pack outs there. Primarily recovery gear. The other one is some recovery gear, but mainly a lot of the shower components. Working back under the truck with our suspension, we have the Old Man Emu suspension, which is a very simple, affordable suspension. We chose to go that route because we're doing primarily forest roads. We're not doing a lot of rock climbing. We didn't need to make a lot of adjustments. We're on the East Coast. With that being said, we have the air spoiler, which I bent out of aluminum, 1 8 aluminum, and then used the mounting plates from Milwaukee in order for the boxes to be quick release. With the boxes themselves, a good friend of ours, Dan, told us about these incredible locks, which are by a company called Bolt. And these locks, basically, you buy these specifically for your vehicle type, but then they come and you can key them specifically for your ignition key. So we have all the bolt locks, which are matched to our key. So we never should have a problem finding the key for the locks. And if we have a problem, then we really have a problem. So that's the bolt locks. On the roof, we have the Thule Canyon basket, which is nice with the beef bars from GFC. We also typically, when we're traveling, we'll carry a clam quick set we'll supply photos so you can check that out. What's nice with the clam, it's a, it is a hub tent, screened in tent. You can maximize your outdoor living space. We're able to carry that right on the right side. In the future, coming up soon, we will be adding 400 watts of solar panels, primarily when the vehicle is sitting without all the components. We'll show you the power system. But the Max Tracks Extreme, four of those, those may eventually be moving to the side walls but we're still trying to find a happy solution as to what would fit our needs, but we're looking to possibly put those on the side of the GFC. Moving around, or keeping to the front actually, before we get too far, we have the factory insets, which is the Baja design. These are um, just their simple uh, sport lights with the wide lens. So the Squadron Sports with the wide lens, yellow amber this for the ford ranger came as a kit which we put in and then we added the ditch lights we run the wide ditch lights in clear primarily because we have a lot of issues on the east coast with deer in our area we're in the farm country so there's a lot of a lot of a lot of animals that we want to pay attention to on the sides and we drove this out last night and you turned on those lights i'm going to insert that video right here but that was pretty impressive yeah so moving around we have the Method bead grip rims. Now what's nice with these, I'll, I'll also supply a photo, but inside this rim is basically right on side where this tire sits on the rim, it's basically grooved out lines. And the whole idea is that it minimizes the possibility for this tire to, to come off the bead. So you can run at lower tire pressures than traditional rims, and that's what's really nice. We also, we'll show you on the back, we're now putting on the Apex deflators, which we have on the rear, and that will eventually be put on the Later front, which here. are right here. And these are just a great, fast way to air down. You do have to replace, you are replacing your whole valve, which is, you just have to de-bead to one side. But what's nice is if you're doing a lot of off-road, 
you just basically pull this and in less than five seconds you can have this tire from 32 to 18 which is nice with our um, inflating system we use the uh, inflate uh, system along with the ARB portable air setup so this is basically what we use it allows us once again since we have multiple vehicles we're able to basically take this from vehicle to vehicle and this is basically just a two two tire setup which is the in deflate what's nice with that is it keeps it simple two two tires at a time without having to try to worry about all the different cables now granted you have to pop the hood for that we have the wild peak uh, at uh, tires which we really love these things the, the falcons they are amazing how quiet they are uh, these are 285 70 17s which equal about a 13 uh, i'm sorry a, a 33 inch roughly you know one of the things that my uh, mechanic said is that you know the, the taller you go the more likely you are to spend a lot more money so we're just trying to keep it really simple he estimates you know for every inch you're looking at about a thousand five hundred dollars so just keeping it fairly stock with the uh, old man emu that gave us about two to three inches of lift tires gave us a bit more so we have some really nice clearance and this truck has been handling absolutely superb off-road which we're grateful for on the east coast for what we're doing moving around i'd like to talk about the interior inside here we have the uh, built right and um, bullet um, point components i think I, I said that right and that's basically our control system for our gmrs radio and then our mobile phone as we're traveling moving around to the rear we have the blue eddy ac 200 max we chose to go with the max we we have the standard model but we chose to go with the max primarily because it does have the 30 amp uh, plug for rvs and then also the 30 amp aviation plug the plans are also as we're building out our roof with the solar this component here can then have a power um, wire that goes to the rear of the GFC so we can have basically two cigarette lighters to run a cooler or a, a diesel heater which we typically run during our uh, colder temperatures inside here we did the rear seat delete obviously I did aluminum 1 8 aluminum bent plates there's two separate plates here which allow you to kind of move them in and out and then there's a little bit of storage underneath the, the reason we chose to go this route we don't carry passengers and the benefit of having the Iceco cooler with the Blue Eddy in the rear is this is a insulated cab area. Since we do extreme cold weather camping and love that, these two components can be in a warm space keeping each other warm and that allows the power station, if we're getting sun or we've deployed solar, it can charge up because at certain temperatures, power stations don't always charge so it's important to be able to have this in an area that we can have climate controlled for the most part and that's why it's so critical and that's why it's in this space the other thing I really didn't mention which we really love are these window screens which these you know if you want to kind of keep the cab open but you want to you want to cut down on your bugs in there these are great because it's just a great way to get that the right way Keep your window kind of open still not quite right but you'll get the idea and then you can close it so you can keep your window down without keep you know letting the bugs in so moving on to the gfc we have the rain gutters here which are really nice i'll give happy the information for this so you can put it in but what's nice with this is a lot of times when you have everything open and if you're getting major rain what it does is it the drip comes back onto the rail back onto the cab instead of you opening up the door and basically getting just rained on so really simple very simple add-on uh, here we have some marine points that we put on this allows us to have our awning set up which you'll see in the back here which is the sweet spot 2.0 it's a very lightweight system we also have the uh, aftermarket uh, awning rods here and that allows us to open things up and just get a little bit more breeze by having an awning and that's the one thing i will say that i really like about the gfc compared to other products on the market it's a love or hate having the this flap on the inside versus the outside i like the fact that it's on the outside but yes you have to open up the screen net 
which all the bugs come in when you're trying to get this open or closed. So there's pros and cons to each, but it's nice having basically a little bit of extra awning when you have everything open. We have a ladder point here that we can deploy, which is a flexible ladder or extendable ladder. So it's nice with most wedge campers is that their side wings open and it allows you access. So if you need to get in and do things you can, depending on what your build out is, we don't really find that we open this too often, but it is nice in case you have something up front that you need to grab or just something right in the corner of the bed. Or if like maybe you're in this space here and it's raining, you have a little bit of coverage here that you can keep them open, get the nice airflow. Those are some really nice tires and wheels, Mark. I really like what you've done to this so far. Thank you. And one thing that I haven't really mentioned up on this, but these are the RTR Ready to Rock. Uh, gentleman is sponsored by Ford. He races the Mustangs and also the Broncos for Ford themselves. And this is just an incredible add-on, which is very simple to install. All, all the directions are clear. Really nice fit and finish, which is something I'm very pleased. You still get a little bit of, of splatter from the mud, but not what you would have if you had a stock setup. Moving on, as you can see, we have a cover right here, which is basically the force protector, sweet spot 2.0 awning setup. This is very versatile. It comes in the whole kit with the two covers about, uh, they're like a six by 10. I can put them anywhere on any side of the vehicle. They have snaps, they're very versatile, which is nice. The whole kit with four rods, all your straps, the two covers basically comes in at 14 pounds. You know, that's really hard to beat. We are on the East Coast, so when we do a lot of trails, you know, I think a 270 awning's great. Maybe in the future we may consider that because they're nice to deploy, but once again, we have the Clam Quick Set hub tent, and that is just incredible space. So it keeps the bugs out. So by having this allows us a little bit more versatility. If we're close to a tree, we can put it on a side and we can also shorten it. And there's points on this where the rods can go into any of these points or snaps, which makes it really nice. It can all get snapped together. So there's no limitations on what you can do with, the, with all the components that come with this kit. I'm actually really impressed with this, man. You showed me this while you were setting it up and it's one of those things where it's like, if, you know, it's like having a couple handy tarps Yes. That are already prepared for you to do anything with. So even if you had the bat wing or something like just, I would probably still carry this because it's just so versatile. It is. And, you know, you think about it too. Like say you have a spot where you want to, maybe you need to cover something that's raining and you need to cover some of your gear outside. Or you would like to set up some poles and a tent right over top of maybe a picnic table instead of campsite. There's just a lot of, you know, it doesn't have to be to the vehicle. And what I also like is because it comes in two bags that are fairly small, you can take it with you. We have multiple vehicles. We have a camper and with our camper, it, it no longer has its awning. So, you know, I could get suction cups from sea suckers, put them up on there, basically take this, attach it to the sea suckers or any kind of vehicle whatsoever. And now I have myself, you know, an awning. And yeah, here's the close up of the things he was talking about the fittings or the how it has the loops so you can string it to a tree. Like you said, the hole is for the awning, right? Because are these poles, because these poles have straight tips, right? Yes, correct. And then you got uh, snaps here. And another thing that he mentioned was, like if I have one and he has one, we can actually connect them together and make a, a giant um, party house. <laughs> And what's nice with the sweet spot, basically, like I said, it comes in two bags. You know, I'm not sponsored by them. It's called the sweet spot. Right? Yeah, That's sweet you. spot. Yep, force protector, made in America. But, you know, it comes with all these universal straps. And I, I think that's one of the nicest things. The biggest thing I'm not a fan of is the poles do tend to lose their tension. So I do carry just a, uh, a little wrench that can tighten it up. But, you know, any kind of wire, you know, um, rope that you have, all these, all the versatility. So, you know, you don't even have to have attachment points. They have one strap that's so long that basically they show it where they have like a, a, a just a Jeep or a car and they close the back, they put it through the car, the back doors of the car. This strap kind of comes around and then gets the two points. So they're basically just using the, the door of the car to run the strap all the way out to the back and then they can use it off the back. 
So it's it's just a, it's a neat little setup with a lot of lot of a lot of potential. But you know, like anything, everything has its pros and cons. So yeah, sweet spot should get hold of me and help me work this situation. <laughs> Inside we have we have the uh, GFC open all the way up. You know, we've we've been running this GFC almost a year now really trying to work through all the seasons and so far we've been through the coldest temperatures which are winter we run a diesel heater which we just set on the rear tire on the side and then just pipe up no problems whatsoever with the diesel heater uh, inside one thing that we've done and it's been a, a really a added plus is the uh, bed rug and that i highly recommend because they cut them to fit they're really nice you get an uh, r uh, r value of four which is also nice insulation and even like the tailgate one it doesn't have as much padding but when you're crawling up and up and out of this as you get older it's really nice on your knees so i really like that uh, just keeping our systems really simple right now really trying to determine what we need what we don't need for our setup and what we continue to want to do one thing I see a lot of people do is they just, they, they get their campers and they just build, build, build. You know, you really have to take the time, you know, once again, a purpose built vehicle. Everything should have a purpose. We have our step stools, we have our lights, we have our motion lights here. And then also none of this cab has any kind of wiring to it. You know, eventually, like I said, we'll have the wiring coming from the back, but we, everything is this USB. And the benefits of the USB is you know, all my lights here, I can just, I can take on and off. I can move them. So I have all the lighting I need without having to basically run wires. Same thing in the ceiling. There is a LED strip up there, which same thing. It has a main head unit, which is rechargeable. So you don't really need that. We have a portable solar panel because we do camp in the woods. Our toilet system, a soft, uh, flexible like rug that we can put out our chairs. Normally we also, we have our Devos uh, lights, two of those, the Light Rangers, which we absolutely love. We normally have um, a larger table, which Happy has been so generous to supply to us as a gift, and that's been wonderful. And then we have a small tote, which covers all our kitchen gear and stove, which we just use a traditional Coleman stove. And so, you know what I really like about your lights, man, is that, you know, if you have an issue with the light, you just grab the light and figure it out there's no tracing wires there's no wondering what isn't working you know and you can change colors yeah we can have all kinds of fun but as you can see too in the ceiling like i said i mean it's just getting more and more the, the usb rechargeable lights i mean that main unit up there is the power for that led strip but to be perfectly honest you know, I see these people build out their vehicles and they put all these lights. Lights are great, but here on the East Coast, we have mosquitoes. And Teresa, she gets eaten alive by mosquitoes. So truthfully, we try to have less lights um, so we can just enjoy the time out. And what's that is what's nice about the Light Ranger is that it's a nine foot pole. We can put that out, light up the space and have it away from the tent and draws the bugs to it. One thing that I do like and want to talk about is this our little bug yeah. zapper light and this this is great, but we normally have two of these, one above and one below. And this, I don't know if it shows up, but you can see inside there all the all the wonderful bugs that are in there. But it's a little bug zapper. We keep one up to up top and one down below. So that way, Teresa, hopefully it minimizes the possibility of her getting eaten by mosquitoes. Dude, you gifted us one of those and it came in so handy one day. We left the screen door cracked on the Fuso so many bugs came in and we hung it up and turned it on yep. and like 30 minutes later it was all cleared out and that's what we'll do we'll just kind of set them in there and just like you know before we go to bed they'll just be on a couple other little things that i really like you know you get at the dollar store these little mats like welcome mats for a dollar they're made in america it's amazing you can stick them anywhere just put them at you know if you have a ladder put them at the you know at the ground same thing we have this little rubber mat here which is just a car mat we can throw this out if we don't feel like putting out our um our little folding carpet, but we can set that right at the end so we can take our shoes off when we hop in. This thing is sweet. What do you say the the highest point of this tent is? You know, I don't know that off the top of my head, but this, uh, one this, thing- I can't even touch it, I mean. One thing I did not mention is that this is the uh, GFC V2, it's the version two. So they changed a lot of things. The first version, version one, had basically solid welded tubes and this is all modular 
cut pieces ex extrusion that just fits together. So they're able to really keep their production. We are 1919 as for our build. So we're definitely down there in the numbers, but we love it. It's a lot of fun. It just allows us to get to places that we couldn't normally get to and have our sleeping set up with us. Do you want to um, come up and pull this? Yeah, man, I'll show you that. So basically with this, it's really nice. So like, it's kind of hard, you know, happy being there, but if you want to slide around happy behind me. What's cool with this is that we can take this and we can move it in different modes. So if like, say we're in the back of the bed of the truck and we want to, we want to cook or just kind of work on a laptop or who knows. And if not, then we can, you know, maybe somebody wants to sleep up top. We're going to keep the most of the half of the bed open so that's the one thing that the gfc is really kind of known for um i don't think a lot of people sometimes take into consideration things such as if you have to get down in the middle of the night it is a solid setup so typically if you have to get down you maybe use the bathroom below and you have a female friend or um or yourself you just want to get down you have to remove the cushion and depending on what your mats or your bed setup is, uh, that can sometimes be a lot of work, especially in the colder months. One thing I will say that we did find is that we do like to sleep with our head at this end of things so that our feet are down at that. And the benefit of that is Happy gets up there. So the benefit is if we're sleeping at that end and I have to get up in the middle of the night, I'll be right back. But if I was up top, I'll walk you through this. If I was up top and my bed is all together, I can pull my blankets back. I can take this cushion, lift it up. I can put it on my partner and then we can get down below. And so that's one of the things. Now there are other wedge campers on the market. And if you're looking for something that you don't have to move anything, Alu Cab, our friends up at uh, Glenville, uh, they have snap outfitters and they make the tree house they have a really nice entrance uh side uh open spot with the ladder so there's a lot of a lot of campers out there i think even the topo topper there's so many choices but the gfc comes in at one of the lightest campers on the market which is really amazing and it's such a great company to deal with and they're setting up more locations so folks can get them installed on their vehicles pretty much anywhere in the u.s now and really this kind of makes it like one of those situations where it's just when the weather's not great, you know what I mean? Because if it's great weather, I mean, there's no reason you can't just climb out the side or out the right. rear ladder. This is like worst case scenario, like bad weather. Yes. And so. that's, and you're right about that. You know, normally for the longest time I was using a ladder. The last time we went camping, there were so many moths in this forest that basically to open this up with the bug light, we would just had a rush of moths. And it didn't make any sense. So basically just move the cushion and just crawl down. But typically I would just crawl out the ladder if I had to use the bathroom. And if a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of gentlemen who might be running by themselves solo, a lot of times they'll just keep it like this with one cushion out so they can have their sleeping set up, but they can always crawl down. So it really depends if you're running solo, male, female, you know, having one cushion out definitely makes it more comfortable. Having all the cushions in is a little bit of work during colder temperatures. And another thing is uh, for security purposes, you know, some people might not want to get out of the, the camper or the cab and, and be at night. So that is, that is nice if you pop down below, whether you move a cushion or you have an open space. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I dig this thing. What would you say that the bed size is? Is it like just bigger than a full, not quite a queen, but that's it's, a good question. Let me get a tape I, measure. I'll be right back. Okay. Hold that thought. Because I think, I mean, I laid in here. There's quite a bit of room. Now, it's possible. I don't know. A full-size truck, obviously, would maybe be a little bit bigger. I believe it's 50-something across. So, oh. yeah, 50 inches. And I think this was roughly 90. 90. So yeah. 50 by 90. So it's nice, you know, it can be, 
you know, me and Teresa are a little bit smaller folks. And, you know, you are kind of touching elbows. So once again, if you do have a partner, really take the time to determine whether or not 50 inches across is comfortable for you. And also make sure that you're comfortable with getting out, moving a, a cube portion if you're having two people sleep up here. And it's just those little things can really make your experience that much more if you go into it knowing what to expect. Exactly. Really appreciate you taking the time to come along with Happy and me and Teresa to check out our Purpose Built Adventure Rig. Check us out on YouTube and all the other platforms at Out of Office Camping, Facebook, Instagram. Awesome, man. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Good stuff. Go check them out, out of office camping. So right here, we wanted to show you a cool option was that he has it so that he can move his winch from front to rear so that he's able to do any recovery or, um, you know, pull himself out of any situation. And there's also an Anderson plug on both sides so that he always has a quick connect power solution as well. Bam, and just like that. Nice and slow. Deezy, I'm so deezy, tailgate assist. Thank you, Marcus.